Say, let's play a game. Truth or dare? Actually, come to think of it, I can't hear you over the internet, so let's just go dare. I dare you to go to the bathroom. Wait, that's not the whole dare, you weirdo. No, I dare you to go into the bathroom, close the door, and turn off all the lights. In the still darkness, I want you to stare into the mirror. Find with your eyes the deepest depths of your own reflection. And then when you're ready, say her name. Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. You get the idea. Now, some say you have to chant the name 13 times, so I guess if it doesn't work after three, give it a couple more. But what happens next? Oh, you'll know it when you see it. Or feel it. A scratch running down your arm. Bruises spreading over your back. Maybe your hair will start to feel a little warm. Or maybe, in the black mirror, you'll see her. But how did she get there? Thanks so much to Factor for showing us that great tasting, fast, and fresh meals are no myth. The sun in the sky, the moon at night, rivers running over mountains, the mythology that grows around these things, around our world, is driven by desire for understanding, you know, to know who we are and where we came from. Bloody Mary, on the other hand, that is a myth born out of pure fear. It's a story we tell because we don't really want to find out what would happen if we went into a dark bathroom and said her name three times into the mirror. Because whether we hear about Bloody Mary in high school, in a dorm room at night, or around a humble animated campfire, a lot of the stories end the same way. You know, I know someone who actually tried this and they died. But really, who is this woman anyway? What's her whole deal? And how did she turn our bathrooms into her personal killing fields? Some say that before Bloody Mary was in our mirrors, she was a woman in the woods named Mary Worth. Stories of Mary put her in New England in the 17th century, a single woman cultivating a garden of strange and powerful herbs. Now, I know what you're thinking. New England? 1600s? Woman in the woods? Are you already thinking witch? Well, that's about all the information the Puritans needed to suspect her as well. You see, in the literal witch-hunting culture of that American moment in history, Mary Worth was a prime suspect. She lived alone, known only to her neighboring village as a purveyor of poultices and herbal medicine. Classic witch stuff, the villagers thought, and so they kept their distance. But of course, when they fell ill or cut their leg in a broken fence, only the wettest, stinkiest herbs would do, and only Mary knew how to get them. Until the girls went missing. Naturally, their parents went straight to the cabin of old Mary Worth, with the word old being key there because she was an older lady, as far as the villagers knew from their occasional nervous glimpses, but when they knocked on her door to ask about the missing girls, when Mary answered, she looked a little younger, a little rejuvenated. So even when Mary denied all knowledge of the girl's whereabouts, the parents left her cabin still suspicious. How did she look so young? What were her skincare secrets? Well, they feared they knew the answer, draining the village daughters of their youthful essence and leaving them as lifeless, bloodless husks. It was the only logical conclusion, after all. Ugh, but you know, without any proof. I mean, all the villagers could really do was drag Mary out of her cabin and burn her at the stake. So, you know, they started having a big talk about that. But turns out, even acting in irresponsible haste wasn't fast enough. For that night, as the villagers schemed and stoked each other's fears by sinister candlelight, one of their daughters sat up in bed with a start. A strange noise was whispering to her through the trees. Her mother was awake in the next room, treating a toothache with one of Mary's herbal remedies, and no doubt thinking about where she'd get her meds after they burned the pharmacist, but that mother didn't hear any kind of mysterious tree noise. Her daughter, however, couldn't get it out of her head, so she left the house and followed the sound into the dark forest. Now, when the mother saw her daughter leave the house toward the woods, she leapt up and shouted for her husband, who happened to be next door scheming and plotting Mary's death with all of his friends. And then together, the gang of panicked villagers went after the wandering daughter. And they noticed she wasn't being drawn into the woods just by a noise, but by a light. A mysterious light, glowing beyond the trees, held in the suspiciously youthful hands of one Mary Worth. She was calling the girl towards the light. A witch! Oh, but this was more than witchcraft. This was retroactive justification for planning her murder. Ha <laughs> ha! It was at this point that their panic gave way to a sort of glee. The parents becoming a mob, grabbing whatever weapons were at hand, pitchforks, shovels, etc. 
Seeing this, Mary stopped what she'd been doing with her mysterious light and made a break for it. But one of the villagers was packing heat. Heck, he always packed heat. A pistol loaded with silver bullets, just in case he ever needed to kill a witch. <laughs> now, are silver bullets necessary to kill a witch? He didn't know, but to never be too careful, I guess. He fired, caught her in the leg, and Mary tumbled to the ground. Then they trussed her up, tied her to a stake, and set her alight. It was all over, but not quite. For even as the flames licked her skin, she cursed the village with her last breaths. If the villagers, if their children, if their children's children ever said the name Mary, she would be there and she would not be kind. So by killing her, they transformed her from a mortal woman to a myth who would live forever, who would wreak vengeance without end upon the world. After the burning, the villagers claimed that they went over to Mary's cabin and found the bodies of the missing girls out back, buried in unmarked graves. So she really was a witch, right? Well, maybe. This didn't exactly seem like the kind of angry mob that would admit to a mistake. So maybe. As Mary always maintained, she was totally innocent. The youthful appearance could have been herbal moisturizer. The light she held, possibly a torch, which she would logically bring out to the forest because she could hear a girl wandering alone at night. And if she was innocent, then that anger, that to this day animates Bloody Mary to unleash unholy violence from beyond the grave, well, it becomes a whole lot more understandable in my opinion. Which brings us back to the question, what will she do to you if you say her name? You might hear her scream. She might scour your skin with her long nails, maybe set your hair on fire, or break the mirror and slit your throat with the shard. Or perhaps she'll simply stand there, behind you, silently dripping with blood. And if you turn around to look her in her dead eyes, then she'll grab you by the hand and drag you back down to whatever dark dimension she now makes her home. Or maybe nothing will happen at all. It actually all depends on who's telling the story, and that can also depend on who told it to them. But these are all stories you're saying. Folklore, oral history, urban myth with a million variants. What's the truth, you ask? Well, my friends, we're not dealing with truth right now. This was a dare after all. This is white hot adrenaline pumping through an open vein of fear. You wanna know what happens next, then only real way you can do it is to go look in that mirror in a dark bathroom and say her name. Because the only way to know the truth is to dare. And in the spirit of that, here we go again. <clears throat> okay, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary. Huh, <laughs> it was nothing after all. That's a relief. <laughs> You know, one of the things I'll miss most about being alive is the ability to enjoy all of my factor meals that I still have in my fridge. <laughs> Whoa, I'm back. Thanks, Zozo. Factor is my favorite ready-to-eat meal delivery service that's been sending me tasty meals each week for over a year now. Oh man, that's a while. So I don't ever have to worry about what's for dinner. Every meal is ready within two minutes with no prep, no mess, and no cleanup. Just really great food whenever I have time to eat it. It's really that simple. Each week, I just pick what looks the most delicious to me from their weekly rotating menu. And they have so many types of meals to choose from, you can be sure that everyone in your household is gonna get food that they love fast. Like this week, I devoured their honey maple BBQ beef with roasted potatoes potatoes, green beans, and creamed corn. Yeah, that was tasty. Plus, with all the time I saved, I was actually able to boot up the PS5 and check out the new Cyberpunk expansion. Wait a minute, first Keanu and now Idris Elba? Oh, <laughs> talk about breathtaking. You can give Factor a try for yourself with a great discount at factor75.com or by clicking the link below and using the code extra credits 50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Once again, that is factor75.com and the code extra credits 50 for 50% 50 off fast, flavorful meals in your future while also supporting us making the shows you love. So click that link and feel good filling your belly. Once upon a time, Michael Hoggett, Kuya Koi, Joseph Blaine, Easy Coin, Dominic Valenciana, Arclight Games, Angelo Valenciana, and Ahmed Ziad Turk were the best legendary patrons. That time is now. 